Okay, good afternoon, everybody. It's Mike with Alpha Shark and Smart Option Trading. Saturday, November 17th. I want to thank you guys all for joining me. So, um, you know, if you missed this because you say if the time said 11, it was supposed to be noon. Somebody must have made a change. I wasn't aware. I apologize for that. Uh, we'll see what we can do going forward. So today I want to talk to you guys about trading a China bounce, right? And I figured this was probably a good time to start bringing this up because, you know, there's just a lot of news now coming out. Good afternoon, Arthur. Right? A lot of news now, a lot of uh, chatter. So um, we'll go over that. I'm going to go. If you want to get a hold of me, Mike at SmartOptionTrading.com on Twitter. If you don't follow me, you should. At Options Mike, I post you know webinars, information, links, and stuff. Everything else up there. Uh, you'll know your. Um, you know you found me. Come on. I love when uh, we're having issues. Right, you'll see me, you'll see that. So you'll see, uh, you know, you'll see me looking like that. That's us there. That's actually me there in the middle. And um, then you'll, you'll, you'll see, uh, you'll know where I'm at in the right place. Add options, Mike. All right. So our risk disclaimer, day trading, short-term trading, options trading, and futures trading are extremely risky undertakings. They generally are not appropriate for someone with limited capital, limited or no funding experience, or no trading experience, and or low tolerance for risk. Never execute or trade unless you can afford to, and are prevented to lose your entire investment. All trading operations involve serious risk, and you can lose your entire investment. No trades are recommendations or advice, and we cannot be sued for losses of capital. All trades are for educational purposes only. Contact your broker or RIA. For execution, margin, other capital requirements, everyone watching this presentation adheres to all disclaimers on alphashark.com and myself, Mike Pisani. All right, so today we're going to talk about trading the China bounce, why we should be looking at this and how my thoughts on how to go about it. We're going to talk about market sentiment, my general uh, feel in the market. We'll go over institutional flows, and maybe we'll do a quick chart or two depending upon what's going on. I hope that sounds good to everybody. So let's just dump in, jump into it. Trading for the China bounce. All right, so, uh, you know, I've had some very frank conversations with you guys over the last couple of months about different things. And, you know, everybody, in, in their mind's on China, right? All these names, right? So, you know, for me, I was thinking, what a great topic. Start looking at some of these names. Now, that doesn't mean that we should run out there on Monday morning and be buying these names and doing this necessarily, right? But really what we're talking about is, you know, we, we are starting to look at maybe a – a, a, a trade, an end in the trade war, or uh, at least the attempt to end the trade war might be a better way of looking at this, right? So if you start from the week before the election, chatters hit a fever pitch, right? You know, uh, Trump's been talking up Xi, Xi talked nice about Trump. There's back and, back and forth between the Chinese delegates and the United States uh, uh, trade, you know, uh, Commerce Department. Um, and then Trump, you know, is any randomly tweeting or talking about China every chance he gets. So by the way, have you seen how the markets react to every time there's news on this, right? If you don't think the markets care about China, they care a great deal about what's going on. And it's also it's going to make it really difficult to be short this market if, you know, if you're stuck in a position where you never know when he's going to, you know, say something or say something new. What was funny yesterday, he kept talking, and then behind then, you know, quickly the last two days we had the, the Commerce Department and Ross coming out and trying to throw some cold water on things. So, it's, you know, it's, but we have a lot, a lot of talk, right? And we have an event. The, the highly anticipated G20 Summit is set for November 30th, right? That's uh, a big event to begin with, and Trump and Xi, or Z, or whatever, I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, are expected to talk. Now... Do not expect anything to happen from these two talking, right? Because these two don't know the details. These things, these guys aren't going to get involved in it. But it's if they set the stage for what would come after that. Does that make sense, right? Now, that doesn't mean we can't get some good news out of that, right? We can't get some good PR, a nice bump for the markets, a nice bump into names. But, you know, what has to take place behind the scenes is going to take time. And neither side expects... Uh, a deal before January. All right. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. So, you know, nobody's saying expecting a deal, an imminent deal. It's going to take a little time. 
That said, why we care, right? Many of the names and sectors have seen big sell-offs, right? We can look at the ETFs or different names in China space or names that do a lot of business in China. And you know, one thing we know about the stock markets is the stock markets will try to front run any news, right? The market's not going to wait for the trade deal to be to be done, signed, sealed, and delivered before it goes, is it? Does anybody think that? I, I don't. It's going to try. It's going to try to front to front run things. Gee, thank you. All right. So it's going to try to front run this 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 news. All right. It's going to try to get out ahead of it. But expect some head fakes and maybe some bumps and bruises along the way because just because it's trying to get ahead of it, when bad news comes out, it'll sell off on it just as quickly, right? So it's going to be a little difficult. But right now what I'm looking at and saying to myself, there's an opportunity for some swing, big swing trade gains to be had here, especially if the market starts to go, right? If the market starts acting in our favor, that should open the door and help us even a little bit more. Yeah, there's there's definitely big volume. So my idea for names, so these are some of the names that I have on my watch list, and you know you can add to them as you will, depending upon your trading style and what you like. So in China, obviously Baba and Baidu and JD and Momo, those are my favorite China names to play. Be aware that Momo and JD have yet to report. JD reports this week, and I think Momo's the week after. Just put that on your, just be aware of that. And then a little bit more speculative, but all, all not bad ones are IQ, Huya, and uh, Billy, right? So those are some names that if you want to go play with names in China and individual names, those are the names that would be top on my list, right? There's plenty of other names out there, but those are the ones that really, you know, are the big names that we should be looking at in that space. If you want to play some ETFs, FXI, right? That's a China ETF. Asher is a China ETF. And I'm going to throw the diamonds into that, the DIA, right? Because a lot of the big names, the industrials that we're going to look at in the next next one over are in the diamonds. So if it's good for them, it'll be good for the diamonds as well. Does, does that make sense to you guys? Right? And then for American companies, Cat, Deer, both do tremendous big business in China. Boeing does big business in China. They've all been kind of waiting and thrashing around based upon rumors and news there. Uh, GM and Ford represents opportunity for bigger sales because right now they pay huge tariffs. If those tariffs were reduced, they'd be able to sell more cars, more uh, be more competitive within the China space. Freeport, FCX, we've already seen them front running this already. Does a lot of business in China. It's currently being hurt by tariffs, so that could help them. And the the casinos, LVS and Win, especially Win, right? When we talk about the casinos. Why, you know, everybody does wonders what's going on, but what what's been getting killed? What what numbers have specifically been killing the casinos lately? Macau numbers, exactly. Macau numbers, right? And that's because China's leaning on them. They don't want them making. So we've seen the casinos getting beaten up. Man, if, the, if China comes back to life, these casinos will roar right back up, and they they're looking for a reason. Uh, you could throw Milko in there. Right. This is not an. This is not meant to be an entire list. I'm putting my favorite names, right? And you can you can play off of these. Does that make sense? So if you have some names you want to throw out, we can call a couple other ones out, right? You know. Uh, but I'm looking for the names I like best, who I think are 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 are, are lick. We're more liquid names in the option market, easier to play, right? Milko is tough. Milko, which had a bunch of call buying. Uh, yesterday and the day before, it doesn't always move big. It can be very tough on options sometimes. Yep, Tesla. Tesla's a possibility too, but Tesla's got competition in China. What's what's Tesla's competition in China that everybody's talking about, including me this week? That's right, Neo. So that's going to be interesting to see how much China lets Tesla into that space. So these are some of the names on my list. So how do we want to trade them? The first thing, guys, time, time, time. You want to have a lot of time on these, right? Because this could play out for a while. This could play out for the next two, three, four. It could even go further than that. So you don't want to be going short term unless you're doing a day trade or an overnight trade. Does that make sense? But what we're talking about here is trying to take advantage of a bigger move in the markets. Okay. 
So we want plenty of time. We're going to go way out of the money here uh, on the options because we're going to reduce the amount of risk and exposure we have, and we're going to let the move come to us. Right? So we're going to think like a bigger fund, not too, too big, but we're not going to be playing right at the money. We're going to go out a little bit. We're going to look at Delta, and we're going to try to go in that 20 to 30% uh, point, 0.20 to 0.30 Delta area. But we don't want to be unreasonable. So we're not looking for necessarily moves back to all-time highs, although although we'll take it, right? But a lot of these names are way below their 200 days. So that, that opens up an area of a reasonable expectation. So does that make sense to people? So let's go into some names. Let's take a look at some of these, and let's see what we can find. So first off, let's go to the FXI. So let me pull that up for you guys really quick. And I'm here. So one-year chart, right? We can see here one-year chart was a high back before the, the correction that we had in, in, Jan, in February was 53. We bottomed out at 30 at 38, right? So what I'm thinking to myself is we're not even going to try to get back up here or even towards this. Let's just go for a move to the 200-day. So here you go. Move to the 200-day would be around 44.49. Right, it's about four bucks up above where it is now, three bucks or so, and these these options are pretty cheap for an ETF. The March 45s, 71 by 83, they're currently trading at 77 cents on the close, and they got a 2.6 delta. So that would be a nice way to play a move up to there and even beyond it. Right, we're we're staying in in the grain. It's not a very expensive bet. It's nice for all different size accounts. Take what you could like. But it's a way to play this on the FXI. And the FXI is a very gappy instrument. So you could see how it gaps around a lot and it has very low small move days. So we're looking to take advantage of a big move over time, not short. So that's why we're out in March. Okay. So again, you like ETFs? This is an example of how I would play an ETF on this one. Pick the one you like. Baba. Let's talk Baba here, guys. Baba has been a friend of everybody's, right? And it's just been beaten up, bruised, and battered. This is not an idea for scalp trades. I'll scalp these names when they're in play. This is the idea for uh, a longer-term trade, right? I'll scalp these names all day long on news when, the, when, I, when I'm feeling the mood for it. But this is the idea to try to take advantage, put a little risk on, and take advantage of a long-term swing move when you're ready to do so. So when we look at Baba here, off this high around 210, hit low 130. Now we're trying to build. We can see we've gotten back and retaken the 50-day here, right? So again, we're not trying to see let's get back to 210, but a move to the 50-day up around 180 would definitely make a lot of, lot of sense here, okay? And you can scalp these things all day long, right? Especially names like Baba when they're in play. They're fabulous scalping names. So, again, we're going to target 180. I've gone out to April, right? April, again, getting that 0.3 delta. The options are 590 by 610, so roughly six bucks. Six bucks out of the money. This thing will move huge. If this thing was to get up to 180 in any time of you know reasonable fashion within a month or two, which is very possible at this point, those options would be a triple or easily. Okay? You don't have to buy a ton of these that are more expensive. You can buy one or two. And just sit in them, right? If your account doesn't support it, let's play some other names. But this was this is the idea. Do you guys get the idea what I'm looking for here? Is let's find a way to take a little longer term risk and try it when you feel right. That doesn't mean it has to be Monday. That doesn't mean Monday morning run up and go running into this. But start writing these down, look at them, and see if you like these type of trades. Because these are the ones that will pay big time at the end of the day when we get that move. Are you guys with me so far? You guys are really quiet today. How about JD? Okay. JD, name has been beaten from 49 all the way down to 22. Absolutely destroyed. Okay. Now, in addition to being a Chinese name, what other bad news did it have? CEO, right? CEO, rape allegations in Minnesota, and will probably never come back into the United States now because of that. Um, 
Now, what else has we had? What else have we had in JD that has not yet come to fruition? We here. You, everybody remember this move back here in June? That big ramp? Okay, yep. There's another one, right? Jack, you're right. Yep. Pick the ones you like. I'm just pointing out a couple of that here, right? You guys know the point. There was a buyout rumor on JD that I think Baba was going to buy them back in here, right? I'm sure that hasn't completely gone away. But let's look at JD again. Let's move for a move. Look for a move back to 35, which would be huge on JD. Might even be too far of a stretch on this one. But we do have earnings this week, so we'll see if that makes a difference. I tried Google made an investment in JD as well. All right. So again, pick the ones you like here. So I'm going to give you two options on this one. The 28th for the March, right? I'm sorry, the, the yeah, 28th for March. They have a 0.28 delta. They're cheap. They're trading around 94 cents each, right? They would move big if it got that type of move up to there. But if you want to go a little cheaper on this and really try to get it, you can go to the 30s. Again, I'm not trying to go all the way. There's not enough delta in the calls up by the 35 range. Does that make sense, guys? You got to go a little tighter on this one. So I would go probably around the 30 mark, between the, between the 28 and 30 to take advantage of that move. The 30s are a little cheaper. You do lose some delta still if you're expecting a big move. I also, if I was going to do this, I might wait till earnings are over this week. Let them have their earnings because none of the China names have really moved on earnings yet, right? So let them get that out of the way. And if you don't want to play a China company, and there's plenty of them that will be made, right? You could also play some of the American companies that do big business in China that have been hurt. So, again, just looking for ideas. CAT has been trying to recover lately, if you guys haven't noticed. CAT does huge, huge business in China, right? Look at this massive sell-off and dump we had down here. And now it's clawed its way back and retaken the 8 and the 21-day and a move to 143 is really not that big of a move for CAT. Again, forget this, forget this area up here, right? This 170 area. This is not, this is not what we're looking for here, guys. We're simply looking for a reasonable move on good news out of China. And if it goes further, we could stay with something, you know, we could roll it out and do something else. But we're just looking to go here for now. So a reasonable move would be up towards 144 area. All right. 144 area, maybe 150, right? We come in, the 150 calls for May. Again, you're getting more time. And the reason, guys, I'm not using the same options expiration, why do you think I'm not using the same options expiration? Because every company doesn't have the same expirations available. It's one of the weird, weird quirks of what we do. So we got to go with what's out there. But the 150s, they're trading around 475, it's, you know, at 0.29 delta, there's enough volume there to do something with. It's not huge. Again, don't have to go big into something like this. Just drop a couple in there. No, I'm not going to. I would not put a long put on these. I might. Uh, I might put puts on when the market's going the wrong way. I could also probably put a 50% stop on these options and get stopped out of it, Ty, if it really goes my wrong way. But. Honestly, I would try to give these a little bit of, of space. That's why we're going and looking at it like this. If you if you did a strangle on it, you're kind of a little bit defeating the purpose of it. But if that's what makes you comfortable, you feel free to do that. These contracts are followed plenty of time, Danny. These these contracts are plenty of time. These will be, all be fine. So cat. You can look. Again, these are just giving you ideas. If you don't like that one, you want cheaper, you can go lower. I'm giving you where I'm going to be looking. You guys pick where you want. I'm trying to stay around point, point 0.3 in that range, Stan, on the delta, uh, unless it's a name that moves huge. Like Baba moves bigger. I'm willing to go lower on something like that sometimes, right? Trying to stay right around that area. Try to get that point three zero on the delta. Danny, for a small account, something like this probably works better because you're not sitting there playing in the every day. But you do one. Pick the name you like, do one or two, and just let it sit. Right? You don't you don't sit there and trade in and out of it. You just kind of let it sit and let it work for you.
Yeah, Arthur. Arthur's asking the question. Yeah, if I'm long cat calls and there's a pull, will I jump on put short term? Absolutely. I, I absolutely and take advantage of it. And I, I won't just let those options go to zero. I'll put a stop around 50% just in case I'm really, really wrong, right? But, and again, I'm just, I'm looking for ideas here to try to make a big swing trade on an area that's beaten up. And I'm not saying you need to go into this on Monday, right? I'm not saying you need to do anything next week. I'm just trying to put ideas. Nobody's talking about ideas into this right now. Everybody's just saying this market sucks. This market's brutal. And it does. It's tough. You know, I, I got chewed up a bit this week. I ended the week green, but definitely one of my tougher weeks I've traded this, this in the last month and a half. Um, so, you know, I would look and think for something long-term swings that we can play. Do I th you think playing one stock with a small account like this long is better than going long on a small account on two contracts? I mean, two stocks. Um, I would mix it up. You know what? If you know what, I, widen it out. So if you played a China name, uh, the other thing you can do is play it at one of the industrials we're, we're going over here. So you have a little bit of a different type of exposure. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about I, I don't want to talk about Apple in this part because Apple I don't think is connected to anything going on in China right now Arthur I think I, or I think Apple is in its own world of hurt based upon what's going on with their phones and that and that doesn't have a lot to do with um, to do with what's going on in China uh, we can talk about that in a couple of minutes keep that keep that in mind all right uh, so that's cat what's else what else do I got for you guys uh, let me move on here let's do GM so let's look at GM now GM is already starting to come around guys gm is already starting to wake up right so here's your your 52 week high up here at 44 it had nice earnings good move it's holding up here it looks a little better the 200 day is not that far ahead okay so when i look at this i said all right let's go out and grab something in march and i looked at the 40 calls would put it just above the 200 day but that's not that far away now so i went a little further out again 0.26 delta not very expensive Right. And this is a play on the China's already started talking about lowering <coughs> import tariffs on the American car manufacturers. So this would be a good play. Plus, it also has the the uh, potential advantage of what other type of deal that could be made to help out GM. It's not it's not just what's going on over there. We have two other things. Right. You have NATO's about to be saw uh, the uh, not NATO, um, na the new NAFTA agreement. Plus, you can get uh, reduced tariffs with Europe. So there's a lot of catalysts for GM or Ford here. I specifically like GM a lot more. Okay, so we'll take a look at that one. And like, what do I help? I have one, two more for you. All right. Next one is FCX. We've already seen them starting to come after FCX uh, yesterday and the day before. Okay. FCX, another name. Remember this thing was up in the 20s and everybody and that was on CNBC and I won't mention names of who it was and they said this thing's going to 30 plus. This thing is just starting its route, right? And you can see here, now it came all the way back down to 10. It lost, you know, it halved its value in, in nine months. And, you know, and this is a chart when you look at it too, guys, um, just to put this in perspective. Right? This thing was up at 50 at 49 bucks at 50 at one point long ago. So this thing has come way, way off its highs from long ago. It's been beaten up and beaten down. So when I looked at this one, I said, all right, where do I want to go? And I looked out to May and then, you know, I looked at these and said, OK, you have some nice volume out here. 0.28 Delta in the May 15 calls, which would be a move up to the 200 day, which only gets it back to about half of where it was earlier this year. OK. Cheap, 56 cents, nice for a small account. They're already trying to buy it, and you have a possible higher low here on the bottom of this chart. Right? And they've been coming after it for the last couple of days. So we'll keep an eye on that one. It's another different idea. And then the last one is win. And I made money three times on win this week in options. I traded in at a win three times this week, all on the call side. Okay, um, That was one of the ones I traded well this week. Win, again, 
Win is Win has a lot of going on with it here, right? Uh, this one was on a huge upward trajectory, and then it got hit with the obviously news about Steve Wynn. Then Steve Wynn was out, and then there was the rumor that MGM was trying to buy it, and that fell apart. And then we had this just long move down and bad Macau numbers, constantly bad Macau numbers. And now we have a possible higher low on the bottom here, and is this going and filling this gap? And they've been buying into this throughout the week. Uh, we've seen a couple big buyers. And I'm going out here to the March and the 140 calls. And I'm going with a 0.2 delta and stand. This is what I mean. Because win, win could move 30 bucks in a week if it wants to, right? This thing, you know, you see days like this where it'll move five or six, seven, eight bucks a day. You don't need to have as much delta on that one to take advantage of that move. So you can go a little bit cheaper. Okay, so to put some of these names in perspective, you know, what we went over here. These are just some different ideas. Pick the names you want. Pick which ones you're looking for. All right. Um, what else? See if I missed anything. Missed anything. Go back through your things you put in there. Yeah, IQ I like. I'm gonna ha we have something in IQ. Give me a minute there. We'll get over that in a second. Neo, Judith, Neo is uh, not a tariff play. That name's, that name's acting fine regardless of what's going on. In fact, I made money on that this week too. Okay, so that's a recent IPO that hasn't been hit by the tariffs and just doesn't doesn't seem to care about it. Uh, I, I don't I don't know that the tariff play will help Neo as much as the other names. I'd be careful there. I do like Neo, but not for that reason. Does that make sense? Okay. So uh, I, I do think that Wynn and MGM and LVS can all go here. They all have big positions over there. All right. So final thoughts on, on the China trade, guys. Most important thing, pick names you like. I'm giving you ideas. Pick the names you know best or feel most comfortable best. Take your account size into account, right? If you have a smaller account, playing Win may not be the right idea or BABA may not be the right idea for you, right? Baba calls have a much higher IV. So, you know, when you look at them, you know, it's easy to see that. So you may not want to be playing Baba calls. You might want to be playing a name like Cat or maybe playing something like uh, FXI, right, or the ETFs. So take that into account. Time is your friend. If you're looking to take advantage of a long-term move, don't be going to January. Go further out. You can even look as far as June on some of these, okay? And, and just remember, this is not going to be easy. You know, if you get up and you get a nice move and you take some profits, take, put a stop in place. Don't let it go red. You can always buy it back. OK, there's going to be bumps along the way. But if this move starts to go, they're going to these names are going to find fire again. So these are some things I like. I hope this will help you guys out. Stan, if you if you like to spread trade, absolutely. You could do some spread trades. But the way out of the money options, there's, you're not going to get a lot of premium back or protection on, on the spread, right? You'd have to be really tight, which kind of ruins the, the ability of the move. But that's something else you can do, too. If if we're getting, you know, if you don't want to sell the calls, you could sell some um, upside calls against it if we start to get into a, a bumble area and then take them off when everything changes, right? You can trade around it. Micron is a great one. Uh, you know what? We didn't talk about Micron. I, I, I left that out. Okay. Micron has huge, huge amount of business in China. If you've noticed, every time there's good China news, that one bounces hard with the rest of them. So if you want to play a semi, I'm a little down on the semis right now, Arthur. So I'm, I'm trying to stay with more clear names. Does that make sense? If your risk profile is high, yes, but semis and the memory space all seem to be going into a cyclical downturn at this point. So I, 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 I've, I want to be more careful what I recommend over there right now or talk about. It's not a recommendation. It's, it's what we're talking about. All right, let's get back to the presentation, guys, because you guys just keep throwing names out there. <laughs> uh, DTE, what do you mean by DTE, Todd? All right. Let's go into sentiment. We'll keep going over some of the stuff as your questions come up. Sentiment's ugly, guys. Um, so the fear and greed index, which you guys know all the time, very, very ugly here. Staying down here, the 10 in the extreme fear range right now. 
which is good. That means that you know there's still plenty of time for this market to bounce and that we haven't gotten over bulled up here. Oh, I, I was looking at a minimum out to March, Ty. I'm sorry, I didn't follow you on DTE. I was looking March or later. I wouldn't take anything under March. You're welcome. June's better. Depends on how much you you know the count. And if you really want to do like a big fund, buy some 20 Jan 2020s. But I don't want that kind of price action on an option for that long because I have no intention of holding anything anywhere near that long, right? Yeah. Again, yeah, I might get in something ahead of the G20. That's another reason why I'm bringing it up, David, right? Because the G20 is coming and I wanted to get into that ahead of that. All right, so sentiment stirred ugly here. This is good. You look at our stock twitch sentiment at this point. Um, you know we're we're off the lows on the spy at 47. We were down at 45 about two weeks ago, up to 58 on the Qs, and the IWM is up to 65. But they're all still pretty low compared to where they used to be. That said, you know this is good. We want sentiment to be low. When sentiment gets too high. Right, we play the contrarian view. We look for things to come back down. We want low uh, low sentiments. Low sentiment usually means people are too bearish, and they're they're usually going to get their heads handed to them when we see that. The oscillators, which we use to try to track short-term entries and exits on what things look like, uh, um, are been tough lately. All right, so if you look at this here, we had a very good oversold reading down here at negative 300 on the NIMOT, and they took it all the way to a hot reading, over 200, and that's when we had the highs. That's when we were trading right at that 280 on the SPY, and that's what we were worried. We're like, this, you know, everything got hot. Now, we finally cooled off a bit, but you would hope that on the price action we would have cooled off more here, and we didn't. So the oscillators definitely have a bullish, I'm sorry, a bearish tint to them when you look at how they're working. You know, the the we we went from getting very slow to get hot all this year, right? All the bounces up this year, we were very slow to get hot, all right? And we very quickly got oversold. We've changed that now, so it's a change in character. The way the markets are trading, we get overbought very quickly and easily, but it takes us a long time to get good oversold reading. So it's a change in what's going on in the marketplace and how things are trading, and it's just worth noting. That said, we're kind of in a neutral area, so we can go either way here. Uh, the tech heavy, which is the, na the name out, right, is plus 39, same concept. So this is all okay. This is good for us to take some trades. And what I've been pointing out to everybody on the SPY is you have an inverted head and shoulders pattern here on the daily chart. And if you take the noise aside, right, and you just was to look at it from over here, right, your left shoulder, right shoulder, um, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and your neckline is up a little bit over 280, and your important place to hold is 270. And I want to talk to you guys about why 270 for me has been an important number all year because people keep asking me that, and it's very, very simple. Since the market sold off, you can see how many times we have played around on this area and bounced off and around it. And it's kind of been a point of control in this market. So 270 remains a really, really kind of important area to me in this marketplace right now. Also note the SPY yesterday closed on the 8-day, popped to the 21-day, but could not break through. Uh, I want you to keep an eye on that. RSI is no longer oversold. It's, it's kind of neutral. The 15, the VIX here, right, we had that change in character. We talked about this a month plus ago when we broke out of the Bollinger Band and we broke this long-term downtrend. Right, this long, you know, this this long uh, falling wedge, and now we have this upper area. Right, we have a series of lower highs on the VIX right now. Right, from the 29 high down to the 27 air 828 high, and now we put one in at 23. Then we have support right around this 16 area. So this is a very big, big spot coming up for the VIX this week. If we come down, we break that. That could signal that we're getting into an all clear, and that market might be ready to rally. We hold 16 and bounce off that area. It's going to be showing us that there's still we fear of something going on in this marketplace, right? So volatility remains elevated. Definite change in character when we look at the VIX and something to keep our eyes on, keep looking at. 
the cues, okay? Big thing to note today, the last week, is the, the eight day, this gold line right here, it's failed all week long at this point, right? One, two, three, four, five touches of it and has not been able to push through. So the cues is not leading right now. And I think if you guys are paying attention out there, you can see that, right? Tech names have not been, for the most part, the place to be. The, the ones acting well are few and far between in that space. So, you know, again, and most of them are not acting well. So, again, think before you go chasing after tech names. If you look where the money's been rotating into, it's been rotating into defensive names, consumer staples, utilities, uh, big pharma especially, right? So, you know, everybody wants to keep playing nothing but these, these high beta names, and they're great for day trades and scalps. But if you want to be swinging, these are not the places to be looking at yet, not until they come after it. Right, so just realize that the IWM it's been leading us uh, up all year and down all year in both directions. Again, to, it it could not get a close above the eight day on Friday. And again, these are important to notice just because it's continuing to show that there is a weakness in the marketplace. Right, the eight day is a fast moving average. If we cannot retake it, it is definitely a warning sign that there it has you know momentum has not yet come back into this marketplace. All right, so keep an eye on that. All right, again, support down here on the IWN down around 148, maybe even lower at this point. Doesn't seem to want to hold or, or parade well. All right, so overall, guys, my thoughts on the market moving forward are very, very simple. Um, the market's still worried about something. It could be China, it could be political, but they're still not really coming after this market like we'd like to see them come after it yet. So you have to remain tactical. I do have a couple swings on right now. I have a little bit of CL left. I sold most of it. I have some PayPal left, and I have uh, some Berkshire uh, on options, swinging those at this point. Other than that, I'm being very strategic and tactical. I'm trying to swing a little bit more at this point because I do see that names where if you're willing to take some time, don't go short term, buy time that these trades are working. Questions so far? You know, uh, Arthur, gold has looked good at you know looked good for a while, then fell apart. Then the last couple of days came roaring back. Uh, I made one trade yesterday, and I'm always up front with you guys. And I lost 230 bucks. I grabbed Nugget on the open at uh, 1613 or something like that, wherever it was, or 13, 1413, and sold it at 290. And then it came roaring back about a half hour after I dumped it. Um, I thought gold was going to take off yesterday. I tried to play it with Nugget, and I was wrong. And instead, I missed and got myself out of sync and didn't catch anything else. So yesterday, I think, was the first day I've lost money in this market in over a month and a half. Um, told you, it was just a tough week. I was a little out of sync. But I, I, I was watching gold. It didn't give me the move. After the pop in futures in the pre-market hours, it never did anything. Arthur, 20 or 30 percent is not a lot on options. Um, I'd rather you see you take one or two and put a 50 percent option in and then go full size and take 10 or 20 and put a, a 20 percent option in it. I think with these China moves, what you're asking, we're talking about is you got to let some, you're going to have to play for some bumps and maybe play for the ability to add into it, right? But it's, it's however you want to trade, okay? Institutional flow, guys. Let's go over some of that. So these are some ones that I, I've seen, and they kind of fit the theme here. First of all, we did a win. Here's LVS. So look at the buying, and this is off my private Twitter feed for people getting my service. So I'm sharing this with you guys today, right? LVS, first off, Jan 5250 calls, 7,000 of them, $2 million bet, right? <laughs> Huge, right? You can see the 5th, December 7th, 54 calls getting bought big, 4,000, 700,000 of them, right? Jan 52s, March 55s. So by the way, guys, you know, here, you know, you can see that other people here are looking for this, right? Uh, this is unedited, right? I just grabbed this in the block. You can see my post are LVS, March 55 calls again. More LVS, Jan 5250s. So LVS, if you like the casinos and you like this name, a name I'd keep an eye on. There's a lot of flow into this, right? So another name to give you an idea upon. 
Somebody brought up IQ. This is where I'm going to talk about IQ. Yesterday morning, January 2250 calls, 4,000 of them in a big block, opening up block, $1.36 million. 100% on the ask. That's a big, big order for that name. So if it's a name you like, it's showing you somebody's showing some big interest in it here. So maybe keep an eye on it, right? IQ is the Netflix of, of China. And in China, it's never going to let Netflix in, so it's not going to have competition from China. One more for you. I've been long PayPal now for many weeks. Uh, I was right on it. I'm in the Feb 90s. I sold uh, a bunch of them this week when they got green, took some prop, some money, some profits, and I left the rest in play because I do think this one wants to go. And the one reason I like PayPal it had good earnings and it's been holding in. Despite what the market's been doing, it's been mostly just holding in and, and looking like it wants to go. And uh, you can see here, yesterday, December 5250s, 538K, and they came in in a block of 6,400 of them here. You see that? And then by the end of the day, they came a couple more times and they had an even 12,000 of them. So... We've seen big February call buying. That's why I bought it the first time. Now they're coming into December in it. The only thing I didn't like about PayPal, guys, is on an intraday chart. Let me let me pull this up for you. On a five-minute chart, the flow came in into here. Not here, into here, and the stock didn't really react to it. Now the market was weak at times during this, and that's fine. But usually when you get a flow that – an order that big, they buy it. What I also like, though, is they came back a couple more times and hit it throughout the day. So, again, just reasons to keep an eye on it or keep an eye on the name. All right? Something to look at. Any questions on Canada or the flow – not Canada – on China trades we talked about or on the flow here today, the institutional flow I saw? Some ideas for you guys if you want to play stuff like that. If I post, uh, if I post on my private Twitter feed long, I'm in. Right? If you see hashtag long, that means I'm trading it. That's a trade I'm taking. There you go, Arthur. All right, guys. That was about – any other questions on anything? Uh, PayPal has been seeing a lot of flow lately. IQ, that was the first one, Stan. And LVS has seen uh, a good amount of flow into it uh, over the last two weeks. So so those names have seen really good stuff. I, 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 I try to bring it down to what I stand, what I think's best. I'm not trying to sell you guys on this. I'm not trying to get you into these trades. I'm just trying to show you what I think is some of the cleanest flow that we've had in the last this week, and giving you ideas, trying to help you guys out. If you can get something from it, great. If you don't like it, ignore it, move on. Right? I'm just trying to give you guys ideas and show you where I think some stuff might be working. All right. Anything else on China or that, or that stuff? If not, I'm going to do a couple of charts for you guys real quick. Not a ton today, but a few. All right, you can put up some symbols now. We'll take a look at them. Twitter. Let us start off with Twitter. You know I love Twitter, right? You know it's one of my favorite names in the, in the universe. All right, so Twitter. Twitter is pretty easy here right now when you look at it. We have basically you have that big gap up here that's never been gotten to yet. You have the earnings gap, which it has not violated yet either. And after looking really good here during this sell-off and holding in nicely, but not – you see the 100-day was resistance. They kept pushing it down. It finally broke down and came down, but it's bounced back up. So for me, Elizabeth, right now, here's your 100-day and your 200-day about to cross, which is not considered to be a good thing. But it's got to get above those to get back in play. 
if it cannot get above those, then I think that it could be stuck or go or go lower at that point. If it can get back above them, I think it opens the door for the move to the gap in this 37 area, and then we'll see. Short term. Arthur, I didn't I didn't catch Mark Cuban dumping out of virtue. I don't know. Can't help you on that one. Um, I don't I, I didn't see that. But you know what? If you followed most of most of the funds this week, like Jana and, and stuff, they all closed massive amounts of positions, specifically in tech, a lot of tech and beta names. So, you know, the big funds like are saying they don't want a lot of exposure here. They're worried. There's definitely some long term worries here creeping into this market. Uh, Microsoft, right? There we go. All right, Microsoft, you know, really hasn't corrected that much. This is a slower moving. It grinded up, right? Still hasn't hit the 200-day yet, holding up up here. To me, there's really not a great setup. It's not a bad setup right now. If the markets are strong, I suspect Microsoft will be a front runner in tech and goes and be strong name. Uh, but it's not, it's not giving us any reason to be in it right now. Okay, earnings, it sold off the earnings move right away, which is never a good sign, and filled that gap and went lower. So Microsoft, to me, like a lot of tech names are on, I, I, they're not my first go-to right now, Phil, until we see a, a change. Now, if tech really goes on a day for a day trade or a scalp, Microsoft, go for it. But I need to see more than a, a one-day move in tech to want to be swinging this thing at this point. Estow, uh, I wouldn't. Estow is a day trading vehicle, so you, uh, you know, this is if you're you're a day trader, right? It's a it's an ultra short pro Dow. So if you like it, trade it. It's a day trading vehicle, you know. So um, I, I don't. I, I would never encourage anybody, Frank, unless you're experienced to trade that. Okay, and I and I, I don't say that because that means you aren't. I say that because a lot of people here don't ha may not have that experience. This is not something you typically want to be holding overnight. It decays rapidly. It has big moves. This is designed for day traders. Uh, so if you want, you know, but realistically, what you're looking at here on it is that if it's going sideways, the market and look at the diamonds, right? So look at the, what the Dow is doing. All right. The diamonds here, you know, Dow trying to hold this 25, uh, 25,000 area, 25, 250, you know, doesn't look great. Trying to get back above the eight-day, like the other indexes here, staying in play. Uh, I would be careful being short this week at this point, guys. Just really would. Disney, love Disney's earnings. Love what that company's doing long term. Just can't get going yet, right? That said, if you look at the other names, this name is hanging in a hell of a lot better than most of the names out there. If the market turns, I believe this is one of the first names that will go and start running. There's been no call buying in it, so I haven't been paying careful attention to it at this point, Jack, but it's on my radar. J.P. Morgan, the bank's guys are a mess. Uh, they really are. Uh, J.P. Morgan's best in breed, but you know, it, it did manage to get back and put a new high in, unlike most of the other banks, which have not been able to get back to their January highs. I, I don't know. If it's the best of the banks, Jack. So if you want to trade a bank, this is the one probably to do it. It, Citigroup, and Bank of America get the most flow. I'm just being very leery of the banks. They've had every reason to run this year, and they can't get going. Pawn, Palo Alto. We have a buyout rumor in the space uh, on two names, right? You have a buyout rumor currently on SYMC. You have a buyout rumor currently on FireEye. Palo Alto, which was leading, has been falling apart and can't find a friend right now. I don't know when they report. I don't think they reported yet. Um, it's it's whatever reason it's out of bed here. It's extended to the downside. RSI is oversold. I would look for a short-term bounce at this point here, reverting back into the Bollinger Band, reconnect with the eight-day maybe. But there's been no buying, and this is a name they like to come in. If it can't hold here, I would look for it to try to hold down around 160. PCG, you can't touch. PCG right now is running on names and rumors and all sorts of problems because of what's going on out there. Um, you know, if you were short going into, if you were short at the close. On Thursday, you're absolutely getting destroyed on Friday on that huge gap up. 
they have – I'm hearing the bankruptcy word. I don't know. I would just avoid it, Arthur, altogether at this point. You don't want to be shorting it down here. You could try to do a long as it, but it just had a, a, a what a seven dollar bounce. I'd be really, really careful there. Yeah, Estal is not something for me. XBI and healthcare. So we do have a conference coming up. The Asher conference is uh, mid December. It's big for biotech. That said, they're showing no interest in biotech. By the way, this bounce on XBI. Does everybody know why XBI bounced so big yesterday? Okay, if you weren't paying attention, biotech took off late yesterday afternoon because of this. TSRO. Bloomberg reported they're putting they're exploring sale. That got them and a bunch of other names that are in that space in the same space getting going if they're going for sale, like uh, CLVS. So I would be careful trusting this move in biotech yesterday. There was no flow behind. In fact, there was put buying on the index yesterday. Uh, so again, with Trump and the Democrats' intent on lowering drug prices, this area could be under pressure now for a while. All right, let's do a retail name here. Uh, we haven't looked at it. Macy's. So Macy's had... Um, uh, earnings they were they were they were okay uh, they weren't enough and you can see it, it came down and yesterday it re-engulfed that area and went back to the 200 day um, I don't know guys retail is tough I think they're showing that there's still some worries out there otherwise they would have bought up some of the things that Macy's was talking about on their call they were talking about how they're doing a lot more business online and how that's improving and everything and they got sold off anywhere if you were listening to Jay and Nordstrom's, right? Jay and Nordstrom's, they were absolutely horrible. That conference call could not have gone any worse than it did, and boy, did they get destroyed after being one of the stronger names out there. And Walmart, right? So I'm going to go there too. Again, after that nice move, big move up, you know, even though they raised guidance for next year, they talked about how strong their holiday season was going to be, they've been getting dumped. So if you like them, I would keep an eye on Walmart. We have target earnings this week. This is a spot. If Walmart can't hold here, that means they really don't want it. The 50-day is also where we broke out from, so I'd keep an eye on those. Uh, Home Depot is another one in those space. Retail, they don't want anything to do with it, right? You got a small bounce here, and then it sold off, and uh, earnings weren't enough, and it's still selling back here. If it can hold this 170 area, you have a possible double bottom, Holds this area here, right? Strong support into this area. But they're not showing any interest in it here. So uh, I'm not even looking at names like this at this point. All right, guys. Um, what else? So for me this week, it's a holiday week, guys. I'm going to end it on this. It's a holiday week at this point as we move into this week. It's typically a bullish week. It is a short week, right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the markets are closed Thursdays, and it's a half day on Friday. So trade carefully. If you're playing weekly options, realize you've got more decay, right? If you're holding them into the close, you have an extra day and a half of decay that you're paying for. So you might want to go out in time. Be sensitive to what's going on with uh, presidents talking and tweeting about China, right? If you're trying to short the markets, just be aware he seems to be coming out every time the market starts to look like it's going to roll over and talking. So he may be trying to keep things afloat. That said, guys, I want to wish everybody a very, very happy Thanksgiving to you and your families if you're in the United States. And if you're not, I want to wish you guys a very happy holiday season overall. We have one more. Um, uh, I don't think the caravan matters here, guys. I think that's just public drama. I really think that's just nothing there. I wouldn't worry about the caravan. Uh, we have one more webinar this month. I think it's on the 20, I think it's the 29th, if I remember correctly. And I look forward to seeing you guys then. Thank you guys for spending part of your Saturday with me. I appreciate it. Enjoy your weekend. And I'll push some charts up tomorrow on my, on my public Twitter feed for you guys. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Arthur. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.